Okay, so uh, so Maharaj Nabi got the son uh, who was the Lord, of, the Lord came as the son of Maharaj Nabi and Meru Dev, and from the different signs on the body of the child they could understand that he was the incarnation of the Lord. Uh, the, the one way in which they could understand he was the Lord was from the marks on the bottom of his feet, auspicious markings like the thunderbolt and a flag. In Brihad Bhagavad Hamrita, they describe the incarnations of the Lord that they will have like a, a Sudarsan chakra on the palm of their hand. They will have the symbol, the, 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 the markings like a Sudarsan chakra in the palm. So this child of Maharaj Nabi, he had all the good qualities. He was very peaceful and he was very kind-hearted, caring for others. He could control his senses and mind. And uh, he was not anxious to get material sense gratification. The son of such a powerful ruler, such a great king as Maharaj Nabi, the son was not anxious to enjoy all the material opulence. So when the child was growing up, all the citizens in the kingdom and all the brahmanas and all the ministers of the, 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 the people who assisted the king all saw the qualities of this child. They understood that he would make a very good ruler. He would make he would be able to take the position of his father and be the ruler of the, the earth. Uh, yeah we we see in the Kali Yuga there are many people who claim sometimes the followers claim that their guru or their leader is an incarnation of God. 
but these people don't actually have the opulence or the qualities of incarnation. Somebody is actually an incarnation of God, but then he should be like Bhagavan. He should have all, he should have great, the greatest amount of wealth. And he won't keep the wealth just for himself. He will see the wealth is distributed to everyone. He should also be very powerful in physical strength. He should have a good knowledge, good and should be highly intelligent and wise. I should look attractive, or handsome, very good looking. He should be famous. And he should, at the same time, he should not be attached to these material things. He should be renounced. So, we don't get incarnations of God who are poor. <laughs> Somebody's an incarnation of God, but they don't have any money. <laughs> then it's not a real incarnation of God. So when Maharaj Nabi's son appeared in the world, they gave him the name Rishabha. Rishabha means the best of all human Because they gave him this name because he had so many incredible, he'd be so qualified, he had so many wonderful qualities that he impressed everyone. Everyone was overwhelmed to see him, to see wonderful qualities. So when they called him Rishabha, it was very suitable name for him because he really was the best of men. So Rishabha was so opulent and his material opulence was so great that Indra, the king of heaven, became envious of him. And Indra was so angry and envious of him, Indra stopped sending rain. He, he, he wouldn't allow any clouds to go over the planet Earth. And the planet Earth was in danger because there was no rain. 
呃，求英者，英者呢是这么的愤恨、嫉妒他，他就阻止云呃，阻止所有的雨云来到地球上方，地球就处在危险当中了，因为没有降雨。Yeah, if there's and if there's no rain, then you cannot grow grain. It's difficult to get food to feed people. 如果没有雨水，就不能没有农作物生长，人们就得不到粮食。And and if there's no food, then how how the people how they cannot perform sacrifice? 如果没有食物吃，人类就不能生存。So rich, 生存就不能举行祭祀。So Maharaj Rishabh. He used his own internal potency, yoga maya, and by his own yoga maya, he arranged to produce rain to pour water on land on his kingdom. Rishabhadev 就用他的内在能量 yoga maya， 安排就大量的雨水就倾泻倾泻到地球上面。So this way, Rishabha showed that he is he is actually the supreme lord. That he is so powerful, he can do these kind of things. Only God can do these kind of things. So the yagya he was doing, because Rishabdev appeared. When Rishabha appeared, it was not kali yuga. It was a touch. So they were doing different yagya, or, or no, treta yuga. They were not performing. The, the, they were doing the yagya with, with mantras and offering ghee and chanting prayers. And, and offering ghee into the fire, they would do that kind of yagya. So, when Rishabhadev appeared, it was not the Kali era, but the Treta era. Treta era, people would perform many yagya rituals, and they would offer the food in the fire. But Kali Yuga, the yagya is. By Sankirtan, the Sankirtan Yoga is performed in Kali Yuga. It is very easy to perform, and people can do it in every home, everywhere. Do the Sankirtan Yoga. They will advance spiritually and materially. Also, they will be happy and peaceful. So, because Abhi got such a nice son, he was very, he was very satisfied with his son. He felt so much attachment for his son. And although he knew he he could understand this son is the the supreme lord, but he couldn't think of him as God. He could only think of him as his son. Yashoda cannot understand Krishna as God. They only think of Krishna. Oh, that's just like Krishna and Yashoda. They don't put Krishna as God. They don't put Krishna as their son. Or 
Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra, they could only understand Lord Chaitanya as their son. They couldn't understand his actual identity. So that's that the influence of Yoga Maya, which causes them to think of the Lord of Sun. So when the king, King Nabi understood that his son Rishabdev, Rishabhadev is very popular and all the citizens, all the people love him, then he became the king and he wanted to retire. So he had his son, uh, put, he went to the brahmanas and the brahmanas would guide him and tell him how to run the country, what to do to make the country prosperous and economically successful. So when he had his son all trained up and then have his son take over the country, then Maharaj Nabi and his wife Meru Devi, they went, they took Vanaprastha the Himalayas. They went to the very special holy place high up in the Himalayas called Badarik Ashram. Four holy places in the Himalayan mountains. There's Badrin, this place, Badarik Ashram or Badrinath, and there's another place, Kedarnath, and there's another place, Gangotri and Yamunotri. It means the place where the source of the Ganges, where the Ganges comes from. And Yamunotri means the Yamuna comes from. So their their source is in the Himalayas, high up in the Himalayas. Gangotri. Yamuno Yamuno tree. Ashram is the place where Nara Narayan Rishi reside, where they do their austerities. Dhruva Maharaj also went to Badarik Ashram before he left the world. Dhruva Maharaj Badarik Ashram before he left the world, before he de departed from this world. Yeah. Because this was the system in the past, 
that when the kings get, start to get older and they have a suitable younger person to take their place, that they retire, they take vanaprastha, they go to the mountains. And you can see Maharaj Nabi took his wife with him. She went with him. He didn't leave his wife behind. He took his wife with him to the Himalayas. She Because when the king leaves the world, his wife will also leave the body. She'll go with him. So Maharaj Nabi was very expert in doing austerities and and he he did the, he was very happy to do this. And so he, after being there in Himalayas in Badarik Ashram for some time and did his austerity, then he gave up his body and he went to the spiritual world. He went to Vaikuntha. Yeah, he was a pure devotee, so he went to Vaikuntha. He was a pure devotee. He was a pure devotee, so he went into Vaikuntha. Haribo. Haribo. Oh, Nihu. Nihu Laila. Oh, very good. No. Do you but she do you do you such in fashion how she so? Today show. Today, my son, he zai zai kai shi, zai kai shi, why then not too good. Okay, so the the king. So the king. Uh, he retired to the Himalaya mountains and he was a pure devotee and he went back to Godhead. So it's, it's the duty of the leaders that after some time they should retire to make way for young people to come in. Haribo? Haribo. Haribo. Chai. Well. Chai. <laughs> so, Maharaj Nabi showed the perfect example by retiring and going to the mountains to do austerity. Everyone should want to get free from the wheel of birth and death. We should all want to get liberated and go back to the spiritual world. Uh, 
So we have to detach ourselves from this material world and we have to prepare ourselves for going back to Godhead. So Maharaj Nabi, he was worshipping Nara Narayan while he was there in Badarikashram. He worshipped the Lord in the form of Nara Narayan. And in this way, he went back to spiritual world. So Maharaj, he, he just, go ahead. He just went back to spiritual world. So when Ma, Na, Maharaj Nabi was very much respected, and the, the people in his kingdom, the great poets, the sages, they wrote poetry about him, describing his qualities. Right. They described how he was such a great devotee that the, the Supreme Lord came as his son because of his devotion. Only very, very great devotees are so fortunate to get the Lord as their son. And because also, because Maharaj Nabi also had great respect for the Brahmanas and he worshipped the Brahmanas and he satisfied the Brahmanas, in that way he was able to, the Brahmanas were able to use their powers to bring God, to bring the Supreme Lord to, to meet Maharaj Nabi. The Lord appeared to Maharaj Nabi first as Narayan. At that time he told him that, you know, you want me, you want somebody like me for a son, but there's nobody like me. I will have to come myself. And so after then, so then the, the Lord, Lord Narayan, he came as Rishabdi, as the son of Maharaj Nabi. So Maharaj Nabi, he was like the, the disciple, he was like the disciple of these Brahmanas and these Brahmanas, they, they did the yagya for him and by their power they brought the Lord to meet Maharaj Nabi. So after his father, after Maharaj Nabi had gone off to the Badarik Ashram, then Rishabdev the kingdom and he taught all the people how to do their duties properly. Uh, 
山，呃，喜马拉雅山的时候，人下班队伍就接管了王国，他教导臣民们。And the first thing Rishabdev did was he became a brahmachari and he went to live in the guru's ashram and he got a training from the guru, the spiritual master. Hmm. Brahmachari, 这首生，他去了 Guru Kula 阿 Guru 的 Ashram， 受到训灵性导师的训练。Yeah, he and after he finished his education, and then he satisfied his Guru by giving some dakshina or some gifts, and then he became he accepted a wife. He became a householder. This is the Vedic culture. You first of all get education, you finish your education, then you're ready for married life. Take a wife. So his wife was offered to him. She was brought to him by Indra, the king of heaven. So she was a very qualified lady. His wife is the Lord Indra, sent to him. His wife is very qualified. And they lived in householder life, according to the principles of the scriptures. And this way, they had one hundred sons who were all very qualified, who were all very powerful, equally as powerful as Rishabdev himself. So Rishabdev's duty as the 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 king, the ruler, as an incarnation of the Lord, he has to give pleasure to the devotees and annihilate the demons. So you have to protect people from non-devotees. If there are non-devotees who are like demons, we have to protect the devotees from them. He must show the right. And one, as a as a king, he must also show the people the right example, how to behave properly. So that's why he went to the Guru Kul education. So he was a grihasta, and he taught his sons how to become, how to perfect their spiritual life. Also, he is also a perfect master. He taught his sons how to make their spiritual life perfect. So Rishabdev's one of the one hundred sons, the eldest son of Rishabdev was called Bharat, and he was a very great devotee with many wonderful qualities. Rishabdev, 
有一百一个儿子，他的老一百个儿子当中的老大名字叫 Barat， 他是非常伟大的奉献者，拥有很优，并且非常优秀的。He was such a great person that this whole planet became named after him. It became known as Barat Varsha. 他是这么伟大一个伟。整个地球都以他的名字命名，整个地球称为巴尔的瓦尔沙。So people born in Bharat Varsha today, when we speak, when we say Bharat Varsha, they think of India, but actually it means the whole world. 所以，今天。当人们一提到巴勒瓦沙，就想起印度，但实际上巴勒瓦沙是指整个世界。Okay, so in other sons who were the 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 oldest of the among the eldest from the one hundred sons, there were nine other sons, and they became like the kings, the Maharaj Maharaj Rashabdev. Divided his kingdom among his nine eldest sons. In these nine eldest sons, there were ten of them. So they each ruled the whole world. There were ten of them. So they each ruled the whole world. 就在家，巴拉特就他们一共十个，这十个儿子，他们就共同统治这个世界。Then Barat, then、uh, Rishabdev had nine sons who were called. They, they're known as the nine Yogendras, and they're described in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the eleventh canto. 在这个一百个儿子当中，还有。Right, and we、we'll、hear about it. there. It's、uh, Vasudev is speaking to Narada Muni、uh, in the eleventh canto. Talks in the eleventh canto. There's talks between Narada Muni and Vasudev. Krishna's father. The, uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita, the tenth chapter, 就有关于 Vasudev 和 Narada Muni 之间的对话。Ma Vasudev 是 Krishna 的父亲。And so when Narada Muni is talking to Vasudev, he will quote, he will tell about the nine Yogendras and how they taught their teachings and their preaching, what they preach. 嗯，那的木就就给 Vasudev 讲述了九位 Yogendra 的教导。So the nine Yogendras, very powerful. They they don't marry. They're just preachers. They're just traveling everywhere, preaching the Srimad Bhagavatam. 传教，传教不是也不叫他谈。And then there's other sons, right? There's because he had a hundred sons, so we said Bharat, and then the nine eldest, and then these other interests. So that leaves eighty-one other sons. 那我们刚才说到了，呃，呃，这个九位有根者，那剩下还有八十一个儿子。So they all became perfect qualifiers. 他们全部成为
a Brahmana. Interesting. Their father was a king, a Kshatriya, but they became Brahmanas. Of course, Rishabdev was the incarnation of God. He was the Lord Himself. He was no ordinary Kshatriya. They become Brahmanas by their qualification, not by their birth. Nine of them were preaching Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's that's also the work of not the work they're above, they're above the Brahmins and Kshatriyas. They were transcendental to the Varnashram because they were just preaching Srimad Bhagavatam. So 81 Brahmins, 81 Brahmanas, and nine, and then Maharaj Bharat. We'll hear about Maharaj Bharat in a little while, after Rishabdev. But first we'll hear about Lord Rishabdev, then we will hear about Maharaj Bharat, how he becomes the, the ruler. So we're, he, we're told about Lord Rishabdev, how he was very uh, pure, he was always full of transcendental bliss, his form was eternal, he had like an eternal form of eternal knowledge. He, he felt unhappy when he saw other people unhappy. He tried to do everything he could to help people. He, 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 although he's the Supreme Lord, he always acted just like he was an ordinary person, like he was an ordinary conditioned soul. Yeah. He didn't think, well, because I'm God, I'm not going to follow anything. No, he followed everything. He followed all the rules and regulations of the Varnashram. Mm -hmm. He, by his example, he got the people, the ordinary people, to follow all the principles of the Shastras. He got the householders to be regulated in their activities and in their lifestyle. And he taught them how to keep, how to develop nice religious principles and how also to establish good economic standards. 
他教导他们怎么样去遵守很好的遵守宗教原则，并且树立了这个经济的标准。He showed that people could stay as householders and at the same time become perfect by following the Varnashram principles. Yeah, Varnashram Dharma is meant for the conditioned souls, people who are not perfect. But by following these principles of Varnashram, people make advances and eventually go back home, back to Godhead. So, human life is meant for cultivating this, for cultivating to get free of birth and death. It's an opportunity when we come to the human form of life. It's an opportunity to get out of the wheel of samsara. 生死的 samsara 生死轮回。So we can do it by following the principles of Varnashram, but in Kali Yuga, of course, we can't follow these principles so well. 通过遵守呃 Varnashram 制度，就可以很好的取取得进步。When when it was suggested, when Lord Chaitanya talked to Ramananda Rai, and Ramananda Rai suggested follow Varnashram, Lord Chaitanya said, "Well, that is external." When Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Rai had a conversation. 嗯，人们难得若一就提出来，人们可以遵守瓦纳上制制度来满足至尊主，但是主彩蛋的妈妈不说，这也是外在的。嗯。Lord Chaitanya wanted to preach devotional service, not Varnashram. Varnashram had already deteriorated in the Kali Yuga. It was already finished. Not followed properly, so Lord Chaitanya just preached the chanting of the holy name and bhakti yoga, not Varnashram. In the Kali era, the Varnashram system has become more and more developed. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to spread the holy name and bhakti yoga. And then gradually. Introduce people to the principles of the Nashram. Gradually bring back people to the Nashram. Ah, gradually, uh, can guide people to follow the Nashram. Yeah, in the Kali, we follow more what is called. Daivi Varnashram, rather than the strict Varnashram which was followed in the time of Lord Rishabdev, we follow what is called Daivi Varnashram. So we have to have leaders in the society who can teach this and who follow this themselves by their own example and show people how to do it. So Lord Abdev is the Supreme Lord. 
he knows everything, but still for the example, because he's playing the part of a he took instruction from us. Yeah, according to the Varnashram, the Kshatriya, the Kshatriya takes instruction from the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas get the people in the kingdom to follow the instructions. Yeah, so the Kshatriyas, they direct the Vaishyas and the Sudras. The Brahmana is the head, they direct the other parts of the body. So Lord Rishabdev performed all kinds of sacrifices according to the Vedic scriptures and he satisfied Lord Vishnu. They, Lord Rishabdev would go to holy places and he would perform yagyas and they would have all the priests and they would get young men and even boys who were priests to do the yagya. Um, just like we do in Mayapur, we have the boys, the young Gurukula boys, do a yagya and they do the yagya, they chant all the mantras, they do everything. They're very pure. Yeah, you get the older men, you know, they're not so pure. Better to have boys, they're pure. They haven't had any contact with the material world. So they're pure hearted, they're pure. But they can do the yagya very nicely. And so they do the yagya and they worship the Supreme Lord and in this way they please everyone, they have a great, very successful yagya. So when Lord Rishabde was ruling, everyone was very happy, every, everyone was very satisfied. Nobody wanted to ask for anything. Everybody had whatever they wanted. And everybody had great love for the king because they knew the king is the representative of God on the earth. In the tenth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, among men, I am the monarch. So the monarch, the, the ruler, the king, he's the representative of God on the earth. So 
嗯，统治者是地球上的神的代表。嗯 ，And Lord Rishabh Dev is not just any ordinary king, but he's the incarnation of the supreme lord. Rishabh Dev 可不是普通的君王，他是至尊主的化身。So it happened. Rishabh Dev came to a holy place called Brahma Varta, and there was to be a meeting there of all the great brahmanas, learned brahmanas. In 有一次呢 ，Rishabh Dev 就去就来到了一处圣地，称为 Brahman Varta 圣地，在那里遇见了伟大的博学的 brahmana 们。Then Lord Rishabdev came there with all of his sons. His one hundred, his sons were all there, and they all heard the teachings, the instructions of the brahmanas. Rishabdev 就带着他的一百个儿子一起去了，呃，那这个圣地。一些伟大博学的 brahmana， 他们的讲话。So. Shabdev also wants to give instructions to his sons. Shabdev 自己也教导了他的一百个儿子 Because he knows in the future his sons are going to rule the world. He wants them to do it properly. 因为将来儿子们会统治世界，他希望儿子们能够恰当的统治世界。Now his sons are all very good. They're well behaved. They have their devotees. They have good qualities. But still, he wants to teach them, and he wants all of the citizens who are there listening to hear what he teaches. His 儿子们都是有着良好的举止，所以热舍队伍就希望教导他的一百儿子，也。呃，所有的臣民们也希望臣民们聆听这些教导。So in the next class we will hear what Rishabh Dev teaches to his sons. 下一周呢，我们将会谈到 Rishabh 给他的一百个儿子的教导。Okay, any questions? 好，那我们现在来看一下问题。Hare Krishna, Good day. 嗯、呃，我我想问一下，就是刚才您讲到，呃，这一百一百个儿子当中，有十有九位有根者，这那个有根者是,是什么意思？是一个什么身份呢？嗯、What's the identification of y o g e n d r a Identification of them. Their names are listed. The nine names are given. They are all saints. They are very attached to the Srimad Bhagavatam, and they just want to travel around preaching Srimad Bhagavatam. They have no desire to be a a big ruler and, and run a country. Be an administrator. They just want to be mis、uh, preachers. These nine, what? They just want to spread the Bhagavad Gita. They just want 
他们没有。界的欲望并不想管理世界。So by their quality, they recognized that they they have that desire to is to study Srimad Bhagavatam, to teach the Srimad Bhagavatam, and to travel everywhere and enlighten people in spiritual knowledge. So by their qualities, by their qualification, they have that. They take up that work. That that's what they're attracted to. Understand? Make by ma. Yes, yes, Guru Dai. Thank you. Understand? Okay, let's look at today's text. 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 Let's look at 比如巴利马哈拉者，在现实中也是这样。有些很好的人也会做坏事，有些很坏的人也会做好事。我们应该以什么样的看待所有这些事情呢？是不是大家都是按照至尊主的意愿在？Understand that some some demons are devotees, just like Bali. He's a devotee. Bali Maharaj is a devotee. Prahlad Maharaj is also born in a demon family, but he's a great devotee. So birth is not important. Haribo, hi, Zayma. I can hear you. 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 Indra, he's a demigod, but sometimes he becomes envious because he's in the mode of goodness. 
Sometimes he is influenced, sometimes he is influenced by passion and ignorance. Not all the time. Generally he is in the mode of goodness. Haribo? Haribo Maharaj. Okay. So, I was saying Indra, he is a demigod, so he's in the mode of goodness, but he's not in the level of pure goodness. So sometimes he's influenced by passion and ignorance. So we have to understand how a person is situated in the modes of nature. It's not just only a matter of birth. Just like you're saying somebody's a demon and so, but, but they may do may I good. So they're not really demons. They're born in a demon family, but it doesn't mean they're a demon. So we don't condemn someone just on the basis of birth. And neither do we accept someone just on the basis of birth. Just like somebody may be born in a Brahmana family, doesn't mean that he's a Brahmana. We have to see the qualities. We see Lord Rishabdev, he's a Kshatriya and he's the incarnation of God, but he, he took the trouble to, t to take training, to go to Gurukula and to be trained by the Brahmanas. So education is very important. We need education. So anybody can become a Brahmana if they're properly initiated and then trained. Okay. Hi, you. Shai, Shai, you went to. Hi, yeah. Uh, uh, although a king is representative of God, but why the modern kings, most of them are, are atheists? Yes. Well, Actually, they're not really atheists. They're, most of the kings, they have some respect for some religion. Like in England, the, the queen is the head of the church. 
And in Thailand, the Thailand people, they have a king. He, is a, he has to be a Buddhist and he has to be a monk. He becomes a monk some t for some time even. And even in America, the, in America, if somebody is not, he would be rejected, he'd be looked down in society. Russia, Russia is also a socialist country, but people there all believe in God. They have, yeah, they have the church, the, the Russian Orthodox um, Church. So, sometimes we do get leaders who are openly atheistic, and you get this more in countries where they're uh, like communist countries. Just like when if you listen to the teachings of Marx, Karl Marx, and he preaches that religion is the opium of the people. So if people listen to Karl Marx, then they're put off. The opium of the people, opium. So this gives a bad impression about religion to people. But in general, most people, most people in the world believe in God and want, they want God, they want some religion. Especially when there's crisis, when we're in great difficulties, then at that time, then we think more and we go more closer to God. So the king's duty is to show an example. The king should be a religious person. And you see like that, the king, he'll be shown going to temple or going to church. That example to his people. Hmm. 
Okay. Shall I go and tea? Offer the results. The results to God, which are in the three modes of nature. Uh, yes, yes. Well, karma yoga means to offer. There's different kinds of karma yoga. One is sakama karma yoga, and one is niskam karma yoga. Sakam karma yoga means we're attached to the result, but we offer the work for the pleasure of the Supreme. don't like to give much of the result. They'll give some small portion. Niskam karma, they'll give much more. But this portion of the result for the pleasure of the Supreme. Mm -hmm. Nis Niskam karma yoga uh, yeah. Niskam karma yoga will give the big portion, the large portion of the work to, for the pleasure. And so whatever the result is, they give it to God. It may be money, it may be something else, whatever the results are, they should, they want to offer it for the satisfaction of the Lord. They may give they may give their child they may sacrifice a child for the pleasure of the Lord. The farmer growing the crop in the he may sacrifice a person, he may give it to the temple or to the brahmanas. So they can give that, whatever the result of their work is, they give it for the pleasure of the Lord. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 下一个问题是让人人发布。嗯，感谢马哈拉哲的讲课，感谢翻译和主持人。
r i s a b a d e v a 的字面意思是什么？它是嗯。阿瓦塔尔，化身降临都有其目的和使命。瑞莎巴德瓦的使命和目的是什么？他向我们揭示了什么灵性理念 ？What's the literal meaning of Rishi b a d e v Is he a Shakti v i s h a v a t a r And each avatar has his own purpose and mission. What's uh, the what's the me, uh, per, mission and purpose of Rishabh Dev? Uh, what's spiritual leading? Okay, so the the literal meaning of the name Rishabh means the best of men. Mission is to teach the people to follow the principles of scriptures, the Shruti and the Smriti, meaning the Vedas as well as the Puranas. Teaching them to follow the Vanashram system. To give respect to the brahmanas and to engage the vaishyas and the sudras. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, he may be Shaktivesha avatar. I'm not very sure. I have to check on it. What's the what? And also, what's the mission and purpose? Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I said, Vanashram, teach the people to follow Vanashram. Uh, okay, how you went, Ima? 还有 ，OK， 说、sure.。OK， 呃、uh, ，Lila， 是是帕布还是马德金？顶拜咕噜和莲呃咕噜的奉献者，在我们学习经典的时候，看似有很多相反的说法，比如一个纯粹的奉献者，甚至朝下托，面又说。啊、呃，让我们嗯，不会让我们呃，因为这些知识而变得思辨，看咕噜。嗯。呃 ，the verses to Guru Dev and devotees. While we, as we are learning scriptures, sometimes there are some contra contradiction. For example. They said that a pure devotee, even ridiculous liberation, on the contrary, uh, it, it is that a devotee should uh, pray for liberation. So how should sh how should we understand knowledge? Knowledge, the, this kind of knowledge, and not uh, become speculative because of this knowledge. Thank you, Guru. So we have to understand liberation. There is definitely the contact with devotees. Just you can use in the contact to 
said in his previous life, he was also the um, son of a brahmana. Prahlad Maharaj. And So, as the son of a brahmana, somehow he, he became and he had contact with a low class woman and they spent the night somewhere in some old, old building and that old building happened to be a temple of Lord Nishingadev. Mm. 